On this episode of Ghost Hunters International, the team travels to Germany to investigate First Necked Castle. Put the camera that way. Oh, I'm actually starting to feel lightheaded. A dangerous entity uses Susan as an unwilling host. My heart is pounding through my chest. I'm feeling really dizzy right now. Can Barry and Chris capture the tormented bishop in the attic? Bishop, it sounded as if you were full of hatred. What? I swear I just saw something go by. Or will this evil force be the spirit that finally brings GHI to its knees? Get her away from this area. Oh, God. Paul, how are you feeling? Really weak. Fursnick, Germany. We have a wonderful case coming up at Fursnick Castle here in Germany. Currently runs as a museum hotel. They have some concerns um, over the safety of some of the people coming to stay in the castle and for the staff. And Susan's going to give us the download to let us know what we're coming up against. Well, guys, we are going to be investigating the unfaithful spirit of Castle Fursnick. The unfaithful spirit? Well, the first owner of this castle was Heinrich Tuchel. He was a knight, and uh, his wife, Elspeth Tuchel, actually ran off with another man. Now, he was so in love with her and so distraught, he bricked her up alive in the walls of the oh, castle. God. Now, people have claimed to have seen her, and she appears as a lady in white. She does make herself known throughout the castle. After the Tuchel dynasty, the prince of Bavaria took over this castle. Whenever he found anyone hunting in his forest, he punished them by tying them up to the animal they were trying to hunt and setting them off to die together in the forest. <laughs> Some of the weirdest stuff comes from Europe. Now, witnesses have heard whispers, footsteps, voices. They've seen full-bodied apparitions and even black masses throughout the castle. They're actually very spooked out by this. So they're hoping that we could come up with some sort of feasible explanation for the activity going on in the castle. Wow, there it is. Oh, wow. OK, the castle's straight in front of us. Let's have one really good investigation and get these people some answers. Franz, how are you? Hi, I'm good. This is uh, Chris. Hi, Hi and nice Paul. to meet you. How are you doing? Hi, right? pleasure. Franz, this is a remarkable looking castle, but what can you tell us about it? Well, the castle first neck was built in 1190 to protect the soul trade. And the second function of the castle was as a hunting lodge for the bishops that live here. Mm -hmm. The former owner of this castle was William Fine. He um, was a Texan with German descent, mm -hmm. and he also died here in the castle. Is it possible you can show us some of the areas that the activity is said to happen in? Sure, i give you to her. Grace, follow me. The reason why I call THI is the guests and the staff are getting really scared, so I want to know the truth. So this is room number three. There were footsteps which sound that they leading to the to this very room. I've heard from many people that there have been footsteps. They come from the hallway straight into this room. It's a bit strange, really. So where to next? Well, I take you to the dining room. OK. So, Barry, this is the main dining area. Very nice. And I take you to the fireplace. OK where the white lady has been seen. One time she was seen by many people at the same time. She was like a full white mess. Now, do they believe that this white lady is the woman who was bricked up in the castle? Yeah, maybe she is, yeah. I think we're going to set up a, a dual camera setup in this particular room, um, maybe using a full spectrum and a thermal, and, and have it, obviously, if, if she only appears at the fireplace, then we're yes. going to concentrate on the fireplace. Good. Good, I like that. OK, so where to next? Well, I take you to the attic now. OK, okay. please. Follow me. This place certainly is huge. 
really is. This is the attic. This is part of the tower. Mm -hmm. Is this one of the oldest parts of the castle here? Yeah. These walls? That's pretty old. So what really happened here? Yeah, when people stand here, people feel watched. Over there, people hear whispers. They're hearing the whispers from outside the building? No, no, because it's uh, a steep cliff outside. So where to next? I'm taking you to the wine cellar now. Okay. Super, okay. super. <laughs> Please. Just say no to <laughs> so here have been many spottings. Mm -hmm. like the first one is over there on the stone, there were some bluish lights. And when people sit here, they feel like touched in the face or in the right. leg. Just, uh, was here. I went into the wine cellar and there was a feeling down there. As soon as I entered, I felt like something was pushing against my chest and I could not move forward. I got really scared and had to leave the room. So, that's the end of the tour. I hope you can help us put to rest some of our issues. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we will see you in a few days and let you know what we have found. Um, and until then, have a good night's sleep and we'll get to work. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Thank Bye. You. Bye now. We just finished the tour of First Night Castle and the stories of the hauntings, this cheating wife who was bricked up in the wall, and of course this unusual black mass frightening both the staff and the residents that stay here. I know that we need to look at those other alternatives, what else it could be. We have footage. The activity itself is very well spread out. So obviously we're not gonna be dealing with any issues of contamination from the other team, so we can all investigate at the same time. In addition to that, there are some, some really cool claims that, that, that really will involve different sort of technology being used. And I'm actually really looking forward to just getting in there and, and uh, getting this tech out and uh, seeing what we can find. So, Paul. Oh. Yes. How's the cameras looking? Perfect. Where are they? Okay, well, in this camera, what we have is um, the dining room area covered by the fireplace where the white lady is supposed to appear. Okay. We've Good. actually set up a dual system, so we've actually got the thermal running there as well, as you can see here. Perfect. Um, we've also got a camera outside that room, one of the full spectrum Good. DVRs. Good. Um, we've also then got the wine cellar. Mm -hmm. um, and lastly, we have the uh, level three uh, hallway going into room number three. Mm -hmm. um, so if anything does happen to go in there, then again, um, we'll hopefully capture that on video. Good. I assume that we're going to have multiple recording devices for audio and uh, situated all around the castle. Yeah, yeah. So let's get the lights out. Sounds good. Okay. EVP session, Barry and Chris, attic. Chris and I came to the attic to do some EVP work. Inside the attic, there were reports of people hearing voices and feeling as if they were being watched. Bishop, my name is Barry and das ist Chris. Hello. It sounded as if you were miserable. We did our EVP session toward the bishop, who was responsible of taking some of the poachers from his land, starving them, then tying them to the animals they were hunting. Where you was cruel is what they say you were. Full of hatred and greed. All the things a Christian man shouldn't have been. I think you're a cruel person. I think you're disgusting. I am not afraid of you. These people you killed, they had wives, sons and daughters. They needed to eat, and you couldn't share your food. Bishop, if you want penance and forgiveness, step out of the walls of the tower, give us a sign. What? I heard something right above us. I swear I just saw something go by. So where's the bloody bishop? Did he eventually have a one-way ticket to hell? Chris and I came to the attic to do some EVP work toward the bishop. Step out of the walls of the tower. 
give us a sign. What? I heard something right above us. I swear I just saw something go by. It went too fast, so I couldn't tell what it was. I'm not seeing anything on here. It sounded like something came very close to our heads. During the EVP work, something, I'm not quite sure what it was, passed down and through Chris and I. I don't know what that was. Chris said that she was able to see something very fast on the viewfinder of the Nini DV. Those images are going to be passed back to the guys in analysis so that we're able to understand what was actually going on there at those moments. Let's wrap everything up here. In the EVP session, Barry and Chris, Attic. Susan and I came up to room three, where there's the claims of the footsteps in the hallway and then entering the room. EVP session, Paul and Susan, room three. I shall invite any spirits here that would like to communicate. We, we want to hear the footsteps. We want to hear you coming closer. You know, maybe if somebody's walking around downstairs, it just travels upwards through the stairwell and to this floor. Maybe somebody could confuse that with it actually being right here. Okay, well, I'm gonna go downstairs. I'm gonna wander out to the hallway, make some noise. Let's see if you hear me. Bumping around. No, I'm just going to talk to you from here without um, the walkie. All right. So, Susan, I don't know if you can hear me, but. Uh, I definitely hear you. Wow. Does it sound like I'm somewhere else? Does it sound closer than it actually is? Yes, it sounds like it's down the hall. Right. Okay, that's actually bloody good. But it's sounding like it was right here. If you come here thinking the place is haunted and you're hearing footsteps, even though they're downstairs, they do sound like they're upstairs, people could probably lean towards feeling like they're being watched by a presence, especially if they're hearing what sounds like footsteps leading towards their room. Maybe we should move on. If, if there is something up here that hasn't come forward for us, we do have a DVR camera situation in the hallway. So if perhaps there is an apparition that does travel up and down, we're going to capture that on footage. So this is the wine cellar. The wine cellar, what, yeah. What went on down here? Uh, they claim that in this particular area here, see those pile of rocks? Uh -huh. They see the, the bluish, whitish, greenish light. And then there's a bench at the end of this tunnel uh, on a wooden wall almost. And people sit there and they feel their legs being touched or stroked. Interesting. Mm. OK, so is there anything that could make a blue light up here. Well, there's a window here. But yeah. it looks like it might be. Shh, 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 shh. I did hear what sounded like crying. We get the audio going. Right off the bat, we heard this murmur or high pitched cry. Uh, almost sounded female to us. Is that deep? Make the TV going. Yes. Point the microphone that way. It sounded like crying. It totally did. Shh. Joe and I kind of looked at each other, started to scramble to get our digital audio turned on, and as we were doing that, the sound happened again, a second time. It sounded like it came from down there, didn't it? It sounded like crying. Yes. Like a woman sobbing. Totally good. Okay, there's, I don't see anything down here that would make that noise. No, it definitely sounded like somebody sobbing giggling something. We it twice. Joe and I followed the tunnels to the end of the wine cellar. We were trying to find the source of those voices, but there was no one down there. It was a dead end. Maybe we should backtrack up there, and then we'll sit, see if we can hear it again. OK. I'm going to stop right here.
I'd like something to brush my leg. I were investigating the wine cellar and first in that castle, and uh, I was sitting on the on the bench, and I thought I felt something brush my leg. Are you a child? It's okay. You can come out. Are you Elizabeth? If it's all right, we want to come closer. If you don't want us to come down here. Just say so. If this is your area of privacy and you want to be left alone, just say so. Joe and I, we can't stay here forever. This place is a big castle. We have plenty of other areas we have to get to. We did an EVP session trying to coax it to come out, and uh, nothing else happened after that. Um, so we'll have to be diligent and listen carefully for the two sounds that we heard. So this is the attic. Susan and I decided to uh, investigate the attic space. We're burying Chris experienced fast movement and heard strange noises. Now, when people stand here, they get this feeling they're being watched, like the wall has eyes. Now, the second claim coming from here is that voices have been heard behind that wall. But the problem with that is behind that wall was a sheer cliff, straight down. Into the forest. And it's quite a way up. So for someone to be on the other side of that wall is somewhat impossible. Let's see if the walls would like to talk to us this time. This is Paul and Susan. EVP session in the attic. Hello. Hello. Can you make yourself known to us? I would like to meet you. Obviously, you must be really proud of your heritage if you wanted to live here in Germany. You know, I'm part German as well. So we have something in common. If there is a message that you need to pass on, we have the ability to do this. Was that you? Just heard it right over there. Sounds female, right? Yes. What was that? It seemed to come from the back of this attic space. Definitely no one there. Ellsbeth, is it you? Ellsbeth. That probably took a lot of energy to make that noise. Could you please do it again? I just respectfully ask. If you need some energy from me, for, you know, feel free to take what energy you need and give us a response. Take what of mine you need and just tell me who you are. What happened? Oh, I've just got the shivers. I'm actually starting to feel lightheaded. Is it like a sleepy lightheaded? It's like a weak lightheadedness. Maybe your energy's being drawn. You did invite them to draw. Exactly, it. yeah. Now, at one point, I was actually saying, use my energy to make a noise. Now, I then started to feel a little lightheaded, a very sort of weak. <sighs> this place seems to have some sort of energy that it's like a vampire and just sucks the life right out of people. And this could be potentially dangerous. This place has got me on edge. Let's get out of here. EVP session in Paul and Susan in the attic area. How are you feeling? Paul? 
Are you okay? Oh, God. Oh, my God. Are you all right? Paul and I investigated the attic, and slowly then after, he started having a decline in energy. How are you feeling? Paul? Huh? Are you okay? Oh, God. Oh, my God. Are you all right? I've basically become very, very weak. Um, I did open myself up um, to, to spirit and, and say, you know what, if you need energy, take some of mine. I think I was unprepared for that. Paul, what do you feel like right now? Just really, really weak. This type of activity has never happened to me before. I've never had this. It's like everything is just an effort, you know? I've never had the issue where I simply couldn't carry on. Maybe we should probably get out of this area. I mean, if you can't, that's fine. I could go run and get you some water. No, 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 no. No, no I'm good. I was just overwhelmed. The, the, my eyes became very, very heavy. Oh. I became very disorientated. I just had to rest. I physically couldn't carry on. I, I'm done here. I, I have no energy. Let's go back to Command Central. Yeah. We thought it would be best for Paul to go to Command Central, take a rest, and try and shut down and see if maybe whatever's shaking him can possibly leave him alone. Try and focus on uh, taking deep breaths and pacing yourself. Britt and Joe reported hearing what sounded like voices or crying down in the wine cellar, so Barry and I decided to go check it out. Yeah, so. This is the entrance to the wine cellar. Uh, it sounds like noise is still coming from down there. As Chris and I had just entered the, the, the wine cellar, it sounded as if a very unusual noise seemed to be coming from the direction of, of the, the tunnel which led into the lower section. Please don't be afraid to come out and show yourself. We're not afraid of you. There's no reason for you to be afraid of us. One point, Barry was hearing some noises at the bottom of the wine cellar. I'm not seeing anything on here. Are you willing to come forward and answer some of our questions? to what Britt and Joe were describing, but we couldn't find the source of the sounds. So this is something we're definitely going to have to pay close attention to during analysis to see if we captured them. OK. It seems to be quiet again. We'll move on. Britt and I decided to uh, investigate the dining room area. There were two large rooms, so we decided to stay in the middle of the archway so that we had access to both rooms, forward and backward. Are you seeing something? Yeah. I think we just saw a flash of light. Point the camera that way, actually. Creep over there and see if we can figure out if there's a piece of equipment that would give off a flash of light. Okay. 
We thought over by the kitchen area he saw a greenish blue light flash. Watch out, it's upstairs. Yeah. No, 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 no light, no light, no light. As Joe and I were in the dining room, we were hearing noises coming from the other side. So I told Joe, let's go down and check it out. It sounds, it goes down into a, like a basement area. It opens up at the bottom of the steps, but it's like she's running back and forth down there. I see it. You saw it? It was right in that corner. As I moved down the steps, Joe saw a shadow. So I immediately gave chase and Joe was right behind me. Did you just see that? I could see that whole back wall and a black mask went from the left side, darted straight across. William, William Find, are you hanging out down here? Or Elizabeth, is that you? Are you trying to lead us to you, to where you're buried? Walk around for us. Again, completely zero. But you know, it does feel colder down here. And over here, it's all zero. But what you saw was tall, right? Uh, about like this. Okay. And it went. It seems like there was something down there, but when we got closer to it, it disappeared. So we're going to have to rely on our equipment to see if it picked it up. I took the complete GHI team into the dining area. This is the area that this apparition of a white lady was reported to be seen by an entire group. And we wanted to see if that group sense would stimulate anything for her to make her appearance yet again. We had multiple pieces of equipment working. We had various different cameras. We hope to be able to catch something to explain and show what's going on in that area. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, we ask if you can come forward. Why don't you step in here, in this setting with us? We are led to believe that you were bricked up for being an unfaithful wife. Is this true? My head's tingling. Her bets is a tingling, Susan. It's like a warm sensation, like somebody's petting my head. My whole body goes through this crazy rush, and when this happens, I believe that there's something otherworldly trying to contact. But this has happened to me ever since I was a little girl, and I can honestly count on two hands how many times this has happened to me, and this is the whole reason why I do what I do. Can you show yourself to us, please? If Elizabeth would like to come forward, she's more than welcome. My heart is pounding through my chest. I happened to be standing next to Susan, so I reached down and touched her wrist to get her pulse, and uh, her heart was racing. <sighs> We started to see something happen. Susan was getting some type of reaction. My hands are getting really sweaty. I'm feeling really dizzy right now. Elizabeth, were you an unjust wife? Were you an unfaithful wife? If you were accused unjustly, can you please come forward? forward into this environment so that we may see you. I'm starting to shake. Please come here, Elizabeth. We aren't here to judge you. I'm really shaking right now like a leaf. 
we could visibly see her shaking. The temperature didn't drop, but she was definitely having some kind of effect to what's going on. I felt like I was about to break into a million pieces, and I felt like I was, I was about to die. Chris, I want you to take Susan out of here. Susan started to go into the shakes, and she had to be removed from that area for her own safety, of course. Elizabeth, how dare you try and take one of our investigators down? Is this some sort of a game? Did you see the easy target and you went for it? If you need energy, we'll willingly supply you with some form of energy so you can come forward and show yourself. This room's gonna need more work. Britt and Joe, and we'll leave you to work and see if she's gonna to respond to a smaller number. I wanna check on Susan. Ending EVP session. Tell me. What were you feeling? What was happening? Oh, gosh. I don't want to be the center of attention right now. It's OK. It's OK. I feel like something's trying to pull me into a trance. Do not allow yourself to slip back into that. Keep your mind fixed. Keep that mind fixed. She was getting very fearful. I needed to calm her down and get control again to push off what may be a trying to affect her. Get her away from this area. Thanks. Elizabeth, please come in this room. If you need energy, you can draw it from either Joe or I. The owners of this castle, they would love some answers, which is why they called us in. They just want to know, are you really here? Won't you come out and hold my hand or give me a hard touch or shove? Elizabeth, can you tell Joe and I, were you unfaithful? Is that a true story? We want to communicate. Come on, Elizabeth, try harder. We need answers. I keep hearing what sounds like a female voice. Elizabeth, if that's you moving around the room, Feel free to do that. Check us out. Is that a footstep? Oh, I'm getting chills. You okay? Uh, yeah. From my legs, and it's working its way up. Wow, it's pretty intense. Is it still there? It's at the top of my head. Britt and I were in the dining room when I got this tingling sensation on the top of my head, something similar to what Susan was feeling. It's a really cool kind of glow around you. Elizabeth, is that you? There was definitely something going on within his body that, that maybe the spirit was just trying to draw energy from. There's no fluctuation in the EMF field. At that point, I broke out the EMF gauge and just checked Joe's immediate area. Come on, Elizabeth, try harder. He said he was feeling colder, but the temperature had not dropped. Elizabeth, we're gonna move on. So I'm hoping that an evidence analysis will be able to figure out exactly what was going on with Joe at that time. I think we've had a great investigation here. Let's get everything wrapped up and get ready to go. There is definitely something strange going on in this castle. I've never experienced so many people being affected by the activity that's been going on here. Some of the investigators, such as Britt and Joe, were reporting seeing some unusual dark shadows. There were some extreme personal experiences as well with uh, Susan and Paul. That's what I'm going to be looking for in the analysis, is that hard evidence to support those personal experiences which were being had. So we're just about to go into analysis for the first night castle. It was a long night. People seeing shadows, chasing sounds, hearing voices. Well, you know, myself, I you know experienced a severe energy loss. 
This is going to be one heck of an analysis. I mean, we're going to be trying to tie in some of this hard data with these personal experiences that people were getting. And hopefully we'll have something for, for friends and, and the, uh, the guests and even the staff of the hotel. Hey, guys. I've got some footage here. It's uh, Barry and Chris, and I believe they're in the attic. Mm -hmm. And uh, Barry says uh, that something swooshed by his head, and, and he can't tell what it is. Uh, but I actually have footage of what looks like a bird or a bat flying. Yeah. And I will slow it down for you, so you can actually see it. Oh, there yeah. it goes. There she is. You can see the wings. You can see the wings flapping. Good catch, Joe. I think. Uh, Barry would be pleased to find out there was nothing, cool. nothing to worry about. All right. Hey, Britt, I'm reviewing footage of Joe and you in the wine cellar. It's caught on audio. Take a listen to it. Oh, it's a nine volt. I hear that. Definitely there. It, it sounds vocal to me. Well, I can't make out what it's saying. It's definitely deep based. Oh, it's a nine volt. Is that deep? Mini TV gone? What do you think? It does sound vocal. Right. I think it sounds vocal. Um, no idea what it's saying. Oh, it's a nine volt. You managed to actually capture it on one of your uh, one of your devices, so that's great. It's just one more piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. well, let's see what else we can find. What the hell, dude, guys? This is the dining room, mm -hmm. the fireplace, lady in white area, and this is where we had the full spectrum, the thermal. Yep. Watch right underneath here. Can you tell me what you guys see? Wow. Whoa. What the hell is that? It is good to see you again. Hi, baby. Hi, Chris. Hi. Nice Hi, Chris. to see you again. You asked us to come in here to get you answers. And this location, I have to say, was full of surprises. Yeah? Yeah, it sure was. Now, one of the claims that you gave us during the tour was these unusual footsteps that led along the corridor and into room three. Paul and Susan are working up there, trying to understand what possibly could be making those noises. And they made the discovery that as people are walking underneath that particular corridor on the stone floor, the design of the building carries that sound all the way around. It sounded as if someone was walking down the corridor and coming into room three. So the guests don't have to fear, to be in fear of any ghosts. That's right. It's the one quiet room. It's the one quiet room of the castle. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of experiences had by all team members. Two of our investigators, Joe and Britt, were down in the dining room, liquor storage. And while they were down there, they were seeing shadows moving. Hey. Oh. Now, Paul was investigating with Susan in the attic when suddenly he became very, very weak and very drained. And we had to ask Paul to go back to Command Central and rest up. And I know that Susan up in the dining room had some really unusual experiences. She started to feel lightheaded. She was getting very anxious. And I believe that we were also able to record her increase of heart rate, which accelerated very, very high. So we had to remove her from this area of the investigation until she started to relax again and everything started to settle down. Who asked us to come in here to find evidence to support a haunting or not? And we believe we have the evidence to show you. Are you ready to see that evidence? I'm definitely a... <laughs> Good. While Britt and Joe were investigating the wine cellar, they were doing EVP work, they were talking, and you can actually hear some sort of voice come in and start talking over Joe. We'll play that for you, and then we'll ask you what you think about it. Oh, it's a nine volt. Is that deep mini TV gone? Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. It was like, like a deep voice. Nine volt. And it was loud enough that Britt actually react to it. Is that deep mini TV gone? How do you feel whenever you hear that voice? He's like, I'm never going down there again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I'm a bit scared. 
two of our investigators, Paul and Susan, were in the attic. And while they were doing some EVP work, they got what sounds to us is a voice. Okay, yeah. I definitely hear that. What do you hear? The first word, come. I think I heard something like, uh, come, where is the... In translation, what does that mean? Uh, the first word is come, mm -hmm. and the second is who's there. That makes sense. For the spirit then to try and ask who was there. And during the dining room investigation, we had several cameras mounted, paying particular attention to the area where this white lady was said to have appeared, this unfaithful spirit. And this very unusual phenomenon was recorded. Oh, the, these two, the small dots, yeah. they're quite impressive because it's in the dining room where the white lady was seen before two times. We believe that those are energy forms. So there is something very weird and unusual going on within the dining room. You had told us of this unusual light that appeared down in the wine cellar. Have a look at this. Now I'm really curious. He's ready to freak out. Yeah. <laughs> no more wine cellar for me. <laughs> now, what the guys did in analysis was to take the, a light picture and a dark picture and superimpose one on top of the other to allow you to appreciate where in the room that light was appearing. Now, as you can see, this is in midair, very close to where your eyewitnesses had claimed this light appeared. This is very, very unusual. How do you feel now, seeing this and knowing that the stories that you've been told are true? true. <laughs> I have to ask you, is this place safe? Is it okay to stay for me and, and the staff and the guests? After looking at all the evidence, um, our conclusion is that it's perfectly safe for people to come and stay here and, of course, work here. We will say that the castle is haunted. Uh, yeah. But of course, our advice may be, when you are going to the wine cellar, you may want to take the wine and maybe leave the spirits. <laughs> <laughs> so on that, uh, Franz, uh, we have to go. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Hopefully, we meet again. I'm very glad that GHI helped to provide us with some answers. So now I can tell my guests and the staff, don't be afraid of any ghosts. Franz seemed to take the news of the haunting very well. But he's a little nervous about the fact that we did find stuff. He seemed a little shaken, of course, whenever we started showing him some of the footage yeah. from, from the DVR cameras. So how did you find Germany? I loved it. I'm really having a good time. And honestly, if the cases keep going this well, I don't think I'll be going home. Well, Chris, let's get back to the hotel and pick up the rest of GHI and move on to our next case. Sounds good to me.